Here now is Matt Austin and Ginger Gadsden with Florida's Fourth Estate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Florida's Fourth Estate, where today we are going to invite you to come fly with us. I'm Ginger Gadsden. Yeah, doesn't that sound awesome? My name's Matt Austin. We're going to do something I never knew was possible to do in the state of Florida. I thought this was a place where you glide off a mountain and then you get these amazing eagle-like views of hang gliding. Well, it turns out you can do it in Florida. In fact, one of the busiest hang gliding spots maybe in the world, we're told, is in Florida. But you have to do it in a bit of a different way. It's pretty exciting. So we brought in the man, Uh. the myth, the legend. We have Malcolm Jones. (laughs) He is with the Wallaby Ranch, and he teaches a lot of people how to hang glide. Malcolm, first off, thank you so much for joining us for our humble podcast. No problem. Oh, man. It's good to have you. So, So kind of explain to us, are people shocked when you say you can hang glide in the flattest state in the world, pretty much? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I first got into hang gliding many, many years ago, and it did mean traveling. Although I learned towing up behind a boat like you'd see in a ski show back in the in the 70s. But uh, hang gliding was, by and large, grew in the mountains. But as they evolved and as ultralight technology evolved, you got to you had some planes slow enough that you could tow hang gliders like they tow sailplanes. So it's actually more practical to do in the flatlands. It's all about thermaling and the mountains just create turbulence. So it's actually, it's, it's better here, much easier to learn. That's for sure. It looks magical. We're looking at the video right now of a tandem, uh, a hang gliding experience, but tell us how we get to this point, Malcolm. Uh, So you were, Matt was saying it's a way that you didn't expect to do it. You get towed by a plane first. Sure. We aero towed up behind an airplane and a glider built for two. The wheels are attached so the, 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 the instructor and, and the student are off the ground from start to finish and you roll out and you roll in. There's really no impact. It's not like a skydiving sort of a landing. The, whole, the entire wing is built before you left the ground. You, you tow up to 2,000 feet, you release from the rope and you glide around. I let the, I let the, the, the first timer fly the glider. There's nothing that run into up there. And then I take it over and, and land it. It's absolutely magical. And you're having a conversation like this the whole time. It's not loud. It's very peaceful and serene. Okay. I feel like if I get into this situation and you're going to be on my back, we're going to get to know each other very well, my friend. <laughs> How come you get to be the big spoon in this whole situation? <laughs> so that when you start, you have to do a tandem, obviously, right? Yeah, you're in a harness. You're in two separate harnesses. You'll be, uh, you'll be happy to know. And one is a little bit uh, higher and staggered, and, and uh, you're not directly over the person, but you are right next to them, and it makes it really easy to communicate. Um, when someone wants to learn, it's just a matter of uh, multiple tandems until they're doing it, and basically they're taking the instructor for a ride. But a lot of the flights we do are just discovery flights. I always teach as much as I can and let the person fly it as much as possible because it makes it more fun, and it's amazingly easy. Yeah. Okay. So you fly over your own property, right? Your place is called Wallaby Ranch. So tell us how big it is. And I know you say you get up to 2000 feet. Can you go higher and how long can you stay up there? Um, you can easily go higher, but it seems to be the point of diminishing returns as far as a repeat tandem because, you know, just as far as fatigue and impact of the experience, um, it's quite easy just to go again and to take two, two flights to 2,000 feet. Or, but you can tow farther and just tow twice as long and go to 4,000 feet. It's just a matter of the time. And uh, we take off out of our field here, which is the field's about 150 acres, but it's in the middle of a parcel that's about 500 acres. And uh, we bought it in 1991, and we've been doing the same thing out here for 30 years. And uh, it's very, very established. Um, we've done more of it than anywhere in the world. And we've, in all the tandems we've ever done, we've never put a scratch on a soul. People are always intimidated. They think it's going to be something really dangerous and crazy. But the way we do it, and we're very picky about the weather conditions. It's got to be just right. And we've truly never put a scratch on a soul. And we've doesn't mean much unless you add to the fact that we've also done more of it than anywhere in the world. Okay. That was going to be my next question. So people don't get hurt while they're out there. You're doing a tandem. Obviously, like, I guess if somebody went out on their own, you can't really control that. Uh, But while you're in a tandem situation, 
I, it feels like a lot could go wrong. Like I took a hot air balloon ride one time and they were like, basically, we don't know where we're going to land. It, we're just going to hopefully get lucky. And I was like, wait a second. what? <laughs> Is it similar to a hang glider or do you have more control? Uh, it, uh, the balloon is not similar to a hang glider, although ironically, they, they, they use my field to take off and land here a lot. And uh, so I'm real familiar with all the local balloon operators. Most of them operate in this area and they're always picking a spot to take off because it doesn't take much room to take off. They're always a picking, picking a spot that'll have them end up here because, because I got a big mode field and the gates always open and I'm friendly and I think balloons are cool. <laughs> so, I'm not in that business, but but they're here a lot. We're often hang gliding around the around the balloons. Uh, they're always early in the morning. They're even more sensitive to weather conditions than the hang gliders are. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what's the best time of day to do that? Because you know, Florida has some pretty temperamental uh, weather uh, at various times of the year. So, when is your busy season the best time of day to take off? Well. Uh, especially in the summer when you get these thunderstorms in the afternoon, early and late is the best time when the sun is at a shallow angle because it's the sun that creates the thermals and the thermals that create the turbulence. And uh, you want you want to do the tandem flight in smooth air. Early and late is best, and we generally start between 7.30 and 8 a.m., seven days a week. Man, and he they are busy out there. I am very interested in how you land these things because it feels like it would be rough and i know we have some video of the landing i'm sorry if you're just uh if you're just listening to this but we're basically we've been watching this gorgeous footage of malcolm doing a tandem ride all around his gorgeous property down near champions gate how does the landing process work my friend well it's a good question you set you set yourself up up with a with a open space in front of you and you come in with the wings level and you slowly slow it down slow it down slow it down until you're almost at a stall and the wheels are like an inch off the ground and you roll in and it's it's truly smoother than the best airliner landing you ever experienced wow. it's just, there's no impact at all um you just you just roll in that that was my yeah, main it, idea that's created the whole thing is, is creating a hang gliding school around the concept of wheels attached to the glider. That's what didn't really exist before the ranch. Yeah, it is a much, if anyone has ever been skydiving, you know that when you land on your feet, it can be kind of a rough and tumble uh, landing. But this, you're in, you say you're in these little body sacks, right? And so you just yeah. kind of s glide along the, the ground there and it's perfect. Do you land in the same place every time? Because I have a problem with directions and just looking, I'm like, how does he know where he is? And I, I know it's, you know, hundreds of acres, but, and it's your property, so you know it intimately. I wouldn't be able to figure it out if I'm solo. Well, by the time you solo, you would. Um, and they're, they're, they're very easy to control and, and steer and put exactly where you want, or you won't be going solo yet. And we, we do <laughs> land in various spots. It depends on the, on the wind direction. We go to whatever edge of the field is downwind and take off into the wind and in turn land into the wind. That gets the ground speed as, as slow as possible. And if it's calm, of course, it doesn't matter. But uh, the, less wind, the less wind, the better. Here's what I want to know. Who the heck are you? Like, how, what? You just decided to buy 500 acres out and back 30 years ago, very little things were down there near Champions Gate. It looks, the property looks gorgeous. And you came up with this idea in Florida to have a hang gliding school. Please explain yourself, sir. It's a, it's a little crazy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of an anomaly. I, I grew up in Tampa and um, grew up water skiing and got into find the little ski kites behind the boat. At the time, they called them delta wing ski kites, but they're really just tiny hang gliders. Then I moved to California and traveled to Australia and New Zealand and all over the place flying hang gliders. And I've, I've figured out a way to make a living with hang gliders uh, my whole life. And uh, when, 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 Aero towing evolved, which was originally started in um, France, but not with the not with the wheels attached to the gliders. Um, we started aero towing, and I realized, you know what, this is this is really opened it up. I can go back home. And Florida's where I was born and raised, and Florida's where I wanted to be. So I took Atlanta. Everybody thought I was crazy, and I suppose you know it was a little crazy. But I figured, you know, some real estate halfway between Orlando and Tampa two of the fastest growing metropolitan areas in the world. How, how bad can it be? You know, and, and right. it worked. It, it actually worked. And I don't regret a bit of it. And I've had a ton of fun and met thousands of people and taught thousands of people how to fly. And uh, I still love it. And it, it's, 
it was a risk, um, but uh, it, it was one of those that, that worked out. It's a nice piece of property, and uh, <laughs> we have all kind of fun out here. I mean, we have you know we have big parties and we have musical events and we have Boy Scout jamborees and everybody that's in the club, their families, their birthdays, and you know, it's 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 a it's a community actually. It everybody worked out that works really for well. Me lives here. Everybody that works for you lives there on the 500 acres you have? Everybody that works really? for you lives on the property. From a passion for hang gliding to starting a hang gliding commune, after the break, we learn more about how he runs his business and the big name celebs that have hit the sky with him. Stay with us. Welcome back to Florida's Fourth Estate. We are sitting down with a man behind an epic hang gliding experience in Central Florida how he turned his love for flight into a hang gliding commune right outside Disney. Everybody that works really? for me lives on the property. So we're here 24 seven and uh, we just live by the weather. When it's nice, we're flying. And when it's, when it's not, we're, we're mowing wow. and fixing tractors and working on airplanes and stuff. Um, the downside, but, no yeah. sick days. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey boss. <laughs> <laughs> the weather the weather gives us the weather gives us time time off but it is an unusual place i mean it's a it's a hang gliding commune and it's a hang gliding club and it's a hang gliding school um, it's, what it tiffany witnessed beautiful. the other day is 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 the school part where you take you take people up and show them what it's all about a tiffany and it's so much producer. it's so yeah. much easier and and uh and simpler than than you'd ever expect and i hope you guys get out here we're only here oh. every day uh, I was saying, don't do not threaten us with a good time because yeah. we're coming out. I mean, with these yeah, okay. visuals we're seeing, it feels like Ginger. We have to go. We're going. We're going. Tell us a little bit about what, like, when someone does it tandem, and then they kind of say, "I would love to be able to do this solo or learn how to fly myself." Can you tell if someone's going to do a good job, or what makes a person, you know, really good at it? Well, truthfully, looking at them, you can't tell. You think that the, the Joe, the Joe Jock guy, uh, is going to learn faster than than the nerd guy with the pocket liner? But <laughs> it, it doesn't work out that way. Some people some people take to it really easily, and some people don't. I don't know if you've ever taught anybody how to water ski or something. Mm -hmm. Some people pick it right up, and some people fall fifteen times. Both people can learn. So there's a, there's a big uh, there's a big difference in how long it takes someone to learn. If they've flown airplanes or they've been involved in some other kind of aviation, it, it comes faster to them. But the average person takes about 20 tandem instructional flights if they get solo oh. to, to oh, get solo. Oh. Okay. Have you ever had anyone freak out once they're up there, though? Oh, I That's bet. That's a very common question. You, you, <laughs> uh, surprisingly, uh, not often. People, however scary they think it's going to be, it's less scary than that. You know, the scariest <laughs> part for everybody who's haven't done it is right at first. And as soon as the wheels come off the ground, they're like, oh, oh OK, because sometimes, you know, one guy's going and somebody else in the group was only thinking about it. But they've watched a few people land an old lady and a little kid. And they're like, oh, OK, I'll try it because it's so much more mild than what they were imagining the night before at the bar. Yeah, and uh, and but they're apprehensive. And I say, look, we don't have to go all the way up. We'll get to 50 feet. If you don't like it, I'll release and land. And then we get to 20 feet and they're like, oh, no, I'm fine. Let's do Let's this. Go Let's go <laughs> yeah. all the way up. So so it's it's, it's it's so much more pleasant than what they were expecting. You never get a freak out. Any freak out is right there before we launch. I have had a couple of kids and a couple of folks get in the harness. They get strapped up. We're all ready to go. And they're like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And uh, I say, yeah, I'm not in the business. I don't like scaring people. So I say, no pressure. Mm -hmm. And we just when we just don't do it. But anyone that is, has allowed you the chance to to get airborne even the slightest amount i've never had one of them back out and freak out in the air oh that's fascinating in 30 years is, too so never. if i wanted to get into hang gliding is it really expensive isn't it what if you wanted to buy your own hang glider it seems like it'd be expensive well it's certainly less expensive than any other kind of aviation no, that's true you know it's, it's going to cost you it's going to cost you more than skateboarding uh <laughs> but but at the same time you know people spend a lot more money hunting and fishing with these big boats i mean you can buy a you can buy a nice used entry-level hang glider for four or five thousand dollars and okay. the, the tandem the tandem instruction is going to cost you about two thousand dollars um by the time you solo on it so that's in total so, for your 20 lessons or something like that yep yep you can but you can go once you can go once for 175 but if you buy a package of 20 up front 
there's a big discount. You can, you can get uh, you can get 20 for two grand. It gets them down to 100 bucks a piece. And it's not really ours, but it's tandem tandem instructional flights. Of course, we do ground school. As you can see, we kind of do the ground school under the trees here uh, usually, and and uh, that that's all included. Um, but but the whole time you're flying, you're talking like this. So there's a lot of ground school that happens at the same time as you're flying. It's it's a totally magical thing. I'm telling you. You, you need to give it a shot. Gosh. It sounds like it. It He's really does. He's talking us into it, Gigi. I, it feels like I, we got to do it. And that happened 10 minutes ago. Did that like- <laughs> you had me at hello, Malcolm. <laughs> we've, had, we've had some people out here. You'd be surprised. I mean, uh, uh, Mike Rowe, you know, the guy that does the Dirty Jobs. Dirty show. Jobs, yeah. yeah. He came out and did a piece on it. And uh, he was actually doing a piece on a balloon, on, on a balloon operator. And uh, they landed here. And he goes, what the hell? <laughs> And uh, this place we, is cool. that was in the morning and we signed him up. He stayed here all day, had lunch with us and did some tandems and uh, just did a whole piece on us and loved it. Uh, we shot a, oh, we shot yeah. a sequence for a, one of, a Kate Hudson movie out here. I think a, one of her rom-com movies, it was called uh, a little bit of heaven. They had a hang oh. line sequence. They were filming here for several days. We had two gliders up in the sunset. It was kind of a romantic interlude in the, in the, in the film. And, uh, We've had Al Roker did a piece on us, and uh, you know today's show's been out here, and, and uh, I had some big time Google executives fly out and oh man citations to come out and learn how to fly hang gliders. We I've met people from all over the world. That's the coolest thing about hang gliding. You'll get a guy that's a, a plumber that's ate up with it, and a guy that's a <laughs> brain surgeon that's ate up with it, and and everybody in between has something really. People that wouldn't normally get together have something really, really uh, emotional yeah. in common. Okay, so when you're up there solo, do you just, I mean, I would imagine there are times where you just go up and you just like being alone. What is it like up there when you're just able to take it all in? It's quiet. It's a real sense of freedom. And you can't hardly worry about what else is going on in the world. You know, what else is going on in life, issues, at work or making money or family you can't worry about anything because you're totally focused on flying that's one of the most magical things about it it takes you out of the out of the, out of the everyday world we're almost out of the real world out here now already <laughs> i try to stay on this side of the mailbox malcolm i'm glad that uh you finally graduated from the today show and micro and you got <laughs> to be on florida's fourth estate I mean, you've really you've really taken you've taken a step down you've uh, up your game. You <laughs> game with this interview but man uh, <laughs> no this was so cool man i appreciate you taking the time to tell us about it to show us these visuals because i don't think even though you've been on all of those things Seems like something a lot of people don't know about, and I am glad we're getting to tell people about it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how unknown we are locally, really. So much of my business is from outside the state and outside the country. Because um, there's very few places, you know, there's a lot of beautiful places in the world to fly hang gliders, but there's very few places to learn. So, uh, you know. Okay. Come on out um, and hang out under the it, tree of forgiveness here, and I'll teach you how to fly. Challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> the tree of forgiveness. We could I all know, use that. Right behind so yeah, great. we're all that's we're great. all into uh, we're into John Prine out here. That was his last album. Oh, cool. All right. Very nice. Very. Well, it's so zen. You seem so just. Uh, I know. I, I feel. I feel my my blood pressure went down just doing this interview. So thank you. Thanks. Yeah. I'm a lucky guy. I appreciate it. Maybe she won't yell at me today. Malcolm Jones, thank you so much uh, for guiding us through this trip. Ginger and I, we're going to go out there and uh, we have to do it now after talking to yeah. you. I'm excited about it. So you got a good. You're going to love it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't see any morning. Give me a call. 1 800 right. Wallaby. 1 800 Wallaby. That's how yeah. people can. Wallaby. Okay, before we let you go, what is the easy. Is that how it is? Call 1 800 Wallaby. Are you messing with messing me right with now? You. No, I'm not messing with you. I'll forward to my cell phone. And I, I always answer the phone. And, and uh, we have the, the our, our website is wallaby.com. Wallaby.com. Thank you yeah, so he's much. He's a businessman. Do you think he's going to give you some bad address or phone number? <laughs> That's on. a really good phone number. You don't hear good 800 numbers anymore. We've been around oh a long time. You know, it, wasn't, it wasn't as many people like, how did you ever get wallaby.com? When we got Correct. that, nobody even knew what it was. Nobody knew what a website was when we signed up for that. Wow. Yeah. Smart. That's great. That's great. Things change. Well, 
Malcolm, we hope to see you in the near future on the ground and then up in the air. Yeah, when you're the big spoon. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Our pleasure. We really enjoyed this, my friend. Thank, thank you so you. much. And thank you for watching Florida's Fourth Estate. You can download it from wherever you listen to podcasts or watch anytime on News 6 Plus.